Go ahead and bring in Joe Ballman. He's the president of Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. Joe, you've had quite the job for the past six months. You're earning every uh, penny that you're making. How are you this morning? Um, <clears throat> I'm doing reasonably well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me back on. We, you know, there was so much support for small businesses in the beginning. And I feel like as summer has gone on and and uh, we're six months into this, some of that support is starting to to fade away because people are kind of getting tired of this and they're going on about living their lives. But so many of these small business owners are still struggling to stay alive. So they see their local restaurant open. What, what they don't understand is that local restaurant isn't serving as many people, but they still have the costs associated with being open. And in some cases that that cost is increasing because they're having to do so many, uh, you know, accommodations for this pandemic. Is there any hope for our small businesses if this continues for another six months, eight months, nine months? So I think um, what you're alluding to is what we refer to as COVID complacency. I think you're absolutely right. Um, there was a lot of rallying calls. There was a lot of, you know, shop small campaigns. Uh, there was the initial support from the federal government through the CARES Act and PPP grants. Um, and that was all wonderful. And it did help a lot of small businesses stay in business. But you're absolutely right. Um, it's currently, I don't know, in the mid 40s outside. Um, so obviously we're through our change of season and we're now into fall heading into winter. And the concern is, is that um, when cold temperatures hit and it's not as convenient to shop outdoors like in downtown Birmingham, which you see behind me, um, and certainly uh, restaurants will struggle to keep additional uh, social distance spacing and outdoor dining. So the real concern is, is that um, when people start to burrow in a little bit, when the weather turns cold, um, they're not going to be um, supporting their small businesses as much as they need to. So very much a concern. Let's, uh, so many small businesses to kind of start with, but let's just, uh, first off the bat, we'll focus on some of the restaurants. Obviously, they so many communities, especially Birmingham, has made exceptions to allow the restaurants to expand a little bit into the parking areas or uh, make accommodations, but we are going into the winter months and I know that some restaurants are trying to figure out ways to be able to maintain that outdoor space, but also how do you maintain an outdoor extended space, but heat it to make it attractive to your, uh, to your patrons? Because even just as a, a regular person, we've been trying to find an outdoor heater for our backyard patio you can't find some of these products anymore. Absolutely. And um, many communities have extended um, their special uses for outdoor dining through the end of the year to try to help restaurants. But you're absolutely right. Uh, another challenge is it costs money to winterize an outdoor space. Uh, it's not only heaters, but it's, you know, it's uh, physical enclosures. I'm sure you've seen these, what they're calling the dining igloos that some people are doing now, but that all comes at a cost, a new and additional cost. And it's one that frankly, you know, many restaurants are struggling just to keep their doors open now. So um, we, we're encouraging our member restaurants to ramp back up their carry out and their dining to go and their family style meals that they've been doing, um, because we think that's gonna become an increasingly important part of their um, their business model in the winter because of the, sp the space constraints. And we would just encourage, you know, the public and our residents uh, to, you know, if they're thinking about Friday night dinner, call up their favorite restaurant, order it to go. You can do curbside pickup. And that way you're helping them keep their staff employed and keeping their doors open. But it's, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, the restaurants, again, are, um, they're kind of right in the, in the crosshairs of, of Corona. And um, with federal support being stalled in Washington for a, a second round of small business relief, um, it's going to be a very challenging winter. And all of us need to do whatever we can to, to mask up, go to the restaurants if you feel comfortable, if not buy gift cards as gifts for friends and loved ones, and take advantage of um, carry out or curbside pickup. 
I, I love those igloos because I thought they were so super cool <laughs> last year and the year before we started that we saw them start to pop up in the area but they only service so many people and if you only have so much space it's you know it's like you said it's not cost effective for so many of these restaurants to have 30 of those outside to be able to service more people but they are cool but uh let's look at the employee side of this because if you drive down Woodward, you drive down Orchard Lake Road, all of these small businesses, especially restaurants, have signs out, help wanted. How hard is it for these restaurants and these small businesses to get the employees that they need for their long-term survival? It's very important. And again, it's just an additional challenge. Um, there's a myriad of reasons as to why there's the labor shortage. Number one, you have to remember that prior to the pandemic, there was a critical shortage, particularly again in the restaurant industry, of qualified workers. There had been so many restaurants that had opened um, that they were really just straining the available workforce. Um, when you throw in COVID and with the unemployment situation, and at first with the $600 stimulus, now the $300 additional weekly stimulus uh, for the unemployed, uh, you may have heard that the governor and the legislature just announced yesterday that they're extending unemployment benefits for an additional 20 weeks. Um, so all those employees who may be uncomfortable about working in that environment due to concerns about uh, COVID um, or having childcare issues because most kids are being taught remotely and there has to be a parent home with them. Um, those are all putting pressures on the labor market and it's one that's not going to be solved anytime soon. So again, um, we just encourage, you know, residents and the public that um, to have patience and to have kindness. The restaurants and the small businesses are doing the best they can. They know their customer service isn't up to the excellent standards that they normally provide for their guests. Um, but we just have to all understand that we are in extraordinary times and, um, we would just you know, encourage people to mask up, follow the rules, social distance, um, but more importantly, to have patience when you are visiting your favorite restaurant or store and to be kind to the employees, the frontline workers who literally are putting their health at risk uh, to, to serve. Joe Bauman with us, the president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, Joe, We've talked a lot so far about restaurants and the ways that the colder months and the continued pandemic are going to affect their business. But we have a lot of mom and pop shops and, and retail in Birmingham and Bloomfield and in the local surrounding areas uh, that are covered by other chambers as well. Similarly to restaurants, a lot of those have been able to move some of their operations outside onto the sidewalks, some even into some roadways in certain communities. How is the winter going to affect those businesses too, because unlike some restaurants where you can have the rather expensive option of having those igloos outside, you can't necessarily do that with retail in, in a way that's viable and secure for that business. So how are they looking to cope with that if they can at all? Well, I think what you see is that many small businesses, restaurants and others um, retail have adjusted their operating hours, the number of hours they're open each week um, they're doing that to try to um, reduce their payroll costs, but also to align their hours with the available staff that they have. And so um, you may have had a store that was open from, you know, nine to nine, seven days a week. Now they might be open uh, from 12 to six, five days a week. So that's one thing that they're trying to do. The other thing that um, they're doing, and I we are encouraging this for sure, is um, Many of the retailers have bolstered their own online, online website um, sales, point of sale process, and where you can actually go on their website and, and make purchases and then again, come and pick them up curbside. Uh, we were running a campaign that was uh, called Put Down Your Mouse. Um, that was really more target, targeted toward, um, you know, the national online retailers um, that are really eating into the, uh, to the uh, success of, of, you know, Main Street retail. Um, but we do want you to go to your favorite local store and go on their website and uh, peruse their offerings and make your purchases and pick them up or have them delivered to your house. So um, 
it's okay to uh, shop with your mouse as long as you're doing it shopping locally. <laughs> That's a good campaign. I will say it's so hard because when you click online, there are so many options out there. And if you don't know the name of that local little store, it makes it hard to find it. So what advice are you giving to some of these smaller shops and smaller businesses about being creative and cutting through the noise of online to get themselves recognized? So we have been very aggressively um, using social media to um, shine the spotlight on our member businesses, uh, make, you know, not encouraging them to be very active on their own social media platforms, but also using the Chambers uh, platform because we may have, we probably have a greater reach than they do with their own um, list of who receives their social media. So tagging us, resharing stuff, retweeting stuff, and really just trying to stay as visible as you can on social media is one thing um, that they can do and we encourage them to continue to do. And you know that's the same for shoppers. Uh, you know you can use the Chambers website to get a, a list of, of businesses in the communities. Um, you can go to the Birmingham Shopping District, enjoy Birmingham uh, to get that same list. So if you're looking for something in particular or you're just wondering what's out there, um, we'll do that. I do want to mention one silver lining. So amidst the pandemic, um, downtown Birmingham did welcome a brand new business. Um, Johnny Waz, which is a uh, high-end women's clothing store. Uh, they had their grand opening about a week and a half ago, and we'll be doing a, a grand opening and a ribbon cutting for them on October 8th. So um, even in the middle of uh, the pandemic, um, people are still opening new businesses, and uh, we need to support them more than ever. Absolutely. And, you know, Joe, one thing I was always one of my favorite things to do in Birmingham was I met up with my girlfriends. We went to dinner. We went to the cupcake shop, snuck in cupcakes, and went to the movies. Not that uh, that might be illegal, but you know. Uh -oh. But we liked our cupcakes oh, over no. at the cupcake shop. Uh, and and how exciting is it to actually be able to have the theaters reopen there in downtown Birmingham? And do you think it's going to be a boost for some of the restaurants and other businesses in the area? Uh, it's a huge boost. Um, number one, you know, obviously the Birmingham Theater is uh, behind me, um, but also the Imagine Birmingham. Uh, the ownerships have been extremely patient and, um, you know, as they've waited to get the go ahead to reopen. And even with the, um, the limits on occupancy, um, anything that's going to bring foot traffic to the Central Business District, um, and that's the same with, you know, the Maple Theater, uh, at Maple and Telegraph, anything that uh, will bring people into town uh, to do just what you said. Hopefully they're not just gonna go see a movie. They're gonna, you know, dine somewhere before or after, they're gonna grab a snack or they're gonna have a cocktail at one of the area restaurants. So um, it's a, a huge uh, shot in the arm. I do wanna mention as well that as I've mentioned here before, you know, um, Maple Road right through downtown Birmingham has been closed since April uh, for a total reconstruction. That project is scheduled to reopen um, the stretch between Old Woodward and Woodward on October 15th, the rest of the road by the end of October. So with the, run, with the um, theaters opening and with Maple Road being reopened, we're really hoping that those are gonna be drivers to get more people in downtown Birmingham and support the local businesses. Joe Bauman with us, the president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. And Joe, obviously throughout this entire pandemic, business education has been crucial, a crucial aspect of Chambers of Commerce in helping these businesses stay alive and partner with one another strategically to support each other. How are those efforts being continued in your chamber and what have been the results of those? So um, we have really strengthened our partnership uh, through our statewide chamber association, the Michigan of Cha Association of Chamber Professionals, um, which actually beginning January 1st, I will have the uh, privilege of being the chair of the board for that organization. And so what it allows uh, chambers to do is to share information, share knowledge, share best practices from all over the state of Michigan. Um, you know, we always say that uh, 
the best idea is the one that's always stolen that you don't have to uh, remake entirely yourself. And chambers in all kinds of trade associations have been incredibly uh, generous with one another in sharing you know, information and sharing best practices. That along with the State Chamber of Commerce and the US Chamber of Commerce, um, we've really uh, done a better job of educating ourselves on all the loan programs that have been out there, the grant programs, um, PPP. Obviously, we don't have a physical presence in Washington, but through our uh, affiliation with the US Chamber, uh, we have boots on the ground there. And as soon as legislation is considered, approved, passed, modified, uh, we can pass that along. And that proved critically important um, through the whole first round of the PPP grants because it's been well documented. A lot of businesses, small businesses in particular, got turned away by their um, lenders uh, when they went to apply for grants. And so we were able to use the knowledge that we had, the database that we had, and then we started partnering our member businesses with um, local credit unions and local community-based banks um, that really st uh, stood up and met the challenge and helped that entire process. So, um, you know, we have a very robust COVID-related resource page on our website bbcc.com um, and really that's been our critical role through this whole process is trying to to bring the most accurate up-to-date information we can to our members um, because they're working 24 7 to try to stay in business they may not have an opportunity to stay up to date on all the different grants and loan programs that are available to them that's our job and we've been trying our best to make sure to give them that information in a timely manner yeah, Joe, uh, I will say for so many of these small businesses, plus things have been changing so rapidly. So organizations such as yours and so many of the other chambers have really been a lifeline to so many of these small businesses, especially in the beginning, because getting some of those loans was just a nightmare. And if you weren't a big organization, then even though it was for small businesses, but for the smaller, you know, businesses with one, two, three, four employees, it was almost impossible to navigate without the help of your organization and so many others such as yours. Uh, before we leave you, I will say I'm ex I am so happy that the construction is wrapping up because it is a nightmare. And when you go through that area, you're like, oh, do I really need this? Or you park all the way down by the farmer's market and then you know walk up and, and try to explore things that way but that uh parking those parking spots can be snagged pretty quickly so i think it's going to be great for the birmingham area for that construction to wrap up before we let you go though we're going into the fall season any fun things coming up can you leave us on a on a happy note for downtown birmingham and the area well <laughs> as much as i'd like to uh <laughs> unfortunately um, we did have to uh, cancel our Halloween parade and uh, pumpkin patch event this year, which is always at the end of October. Um, however, I do know that um, the city is aggressively moving, trying to maintain as many as the holiday events um, as they can. Um, the winter market will go on um, this year and uh, Santa will arrive in downtown Birmingham. Uh, how that's going to work with social distancing, we're not really quite sure yet, but um, there will be holiday activities, there will be fall, fall activities. Um, they're just going to look a little differently than what maybe all of us are used to. So again, patience and kindness will rule the day and uh, will be greatly appreciated by all of the frontline workers who, who you know, really um, step up and, and, and give all the things that they do so we can have what we have. Joe Ballman with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. We always appreciate your time. And like you said, going into the holiday season, buy that gift card maybe to someone's favorite restaurant. You can save a, a mom and a dad that is stressed out on trying to homeschool their kids right now. The effort of trying to come up with dinner and help out a local restaurant as well. And there are so many great little shops in downtown Birmingham to get those specialized gifts. So we appreciate your time. Any last words of wisdom that you want to share with our listeners and viewers before we let you go? Well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to come back on again. Um, it's always a pleasure to do so. 
Um, I do want to mention one thing that um, we're doing at the chamber. So, um, you know, this whole process has been a struggle for chambers of commerce ourselves in terms of being able to generate revenue. Um, but we are very mindful of the impact it's having on um, our friends in the nonprofit world and particularly the charitable world. Um, the chamber has a nonprofit um, group that is about 65 strong of local uh, Oakland based charities that work tirelessly to help those who, who are the most vulnerable. We have um, declared October nonprofit month and what we're doing is every day in the month, we are spotlighting one or two of our local charities, um, shining the light on the great works that they do and encouraging people to support them through their charitable efforts and fundraising. So um, we'll be blasting that out on social media. We started on the first, we'll go the whole month and then culminate on the 21st which is our annual community leadership breakfast and nonprofit showcase. So um, we're trying to help those who need help uh, because we are very grateful for all of the organizations and all of our members that continue to support the chamber. That is such a good thing. It's a, it's a great thing that you're doing. I know my sister has a nonprofit and they're struggling right now as well. This is 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Quickly, uh, Joe, uh, I should have asked you this earlier. If we have a small business or maybe an independent contractor out there that is struggling right now, and maybe they feel like they don't have the funds to be able to join the chamber, what is the cost of your services? And for those that maybe aren't ready to uh, sign a commitment with, with being a, a chamber member, do you have just some virtual tutorials or something of that nature that you could share with those that aren't members? Absolutely, so um, we have felt that it's critically important during this time to help as many uh, businesses as we can, regardless of whether they're members of the chamber. Our mission and our vision is to support the, the entire local business community, not just our members. So um, anybody has access to our website, you can go on all the resource pages. They're all open platform. We're not charging for anything for that. In terms of joining the chamber, um, we've gotten very creative again in trying to help uh, businesses to be able to make it more affordable. Uh, you can break up your payments into quarterly payments. You can sign up for uh, 12 monthly payments through an ACH account. So we're working with all of our businesses because we know that they, um, they need our services. Uh, they just might not be in the best financial position to do it. Fortunately, um, through the generosity of Oakland County, um, we're going to be launching quickly um, uh, an opportunity where we will be able to um, subsidize to some point uh, a member's membership for their first six months so they can kind of kick the tires and, and see if the chamber's a good fit for them. So I would just encourage them to contact me uh, myself, it's Joe B, J O E B, at bbcc.com. Go on our website and, um, you know, we'll do whatever we can to help uh, them get the information that they're looking for and try to help them be successful. It's always great having you here on the Oakland County Megacast. We learn so much when you join us. Thank you for your time and thank you, thank you so for much. all the hard work you and your team are doing to try to help the small businesses survive here in the Oakland County area. We wish you a happy weekend. Thank you. Mask up, shop local.